Who is Newton? Who is Newton? Newton is spontaneous. Oh, wow. Oh, that hurts. Newton is intelligent. Yeah, about as intelligent as my doorknob. Newton is worldly. What does that even mean? You're allowed to take it to Paris? Newton is friendly. And I'm Mel Newton, and this is my wife, Helen Newton. Newton is like your guardian angel, always looking for ways to help you out. Newton talks to fax machines and laser printers, to telephones and computers. Newton is a great communicator. Newton is for all you mobile professionals out there who like cool stuff. It's true, I've never felt cooler than when I've used this piece of sh Thank you. What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and here's a video I've had planned for a very long time. I've been waiting for Apple to release their newest iPad, and I wanted to compare it to the very first tablet offering from Apple. A lot of you guys won't even remember what this is, but this is the Apple Newton tablet. It was introduced 24 years ago in August 1993. Let's go ahead and take a look. Alrighty, let's get this guy unboxed. I'm so excited to see it as I've never actually seen one of these in person. And this is about 30 years later. History has been remade completely. And this is actually the first edition of the tablet ever. So it's the first model number, period. All right, here she is in the original case even. All right, so let's pop her out. And there it is. That is pretty compact, but at the same time, super chunky. I mean. It's got a lot of thickness to it. These guys couldn't be any more different when it comes to materials. This is plastic versus glass and aluminum. High quality design on the newer one, of course, on the old one, cheap, but incredibly durable. You can drop it as many times as you'd like and it's gonna survive the apocalypse even. On the front, you'll find a very sharp 336 by 240 pixel display surrounded by a chunky black plastic border. The new one, of course, looks much sleeker. Getting to this battery bay is not Easy. Oh, oh, that hurts. A lot of suffering in here. Pop that open. Let's get some energizers in here. Looks pretty corroded. I mean, this thing has been sitting in storage for decades. So, all right. Put that ready. Let's go ahead and pop it in here. This is definitely not the apple of modern times. This is so frustrating. Without instructions, it's like so difficult to put this battery in here. I cannot figure out how to do this. Slide it in, pop it in. It's really freaking hard. That took way too damn long. Here is the backup battery. Let's get that squared away. Back when devices needed one of these, that's crazy. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get some power out of this guy. So we've got uh, data transfer ports. Oh man, that's crazy. And the power plug here, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing that's for rechargeable batteries. Made in Japan, wow. All right, here we go, three, two, one. And uh, nothing. It works. I had to click the reset button on the back, but it's actually booting up. Hold the Newton pen on the center on the X until it darkens and then lift the pen. So here is our Apple Pencil 1993 edition. It's got the Apple logo there too. Super neat. All right, let's do some calibration here. So this is a resistive touch screen. These are absolutely awful uh, to work with on a daily. I don't know how people did it back in the day. We are so blessed with our fancy capacitive displays. Compared to the Apple Pencil, certainly a little bit shorter here, a little bit thinner, no battery built in, no special sensors. The tip is a little bit even more precise than the current Apple Pencil, which is interesting. So a little comparison for you there. But hey, this thing is actually on, actually working, uh, resetting it did the trick. So, wow, that's crazy. This is the very, very first model too. So if you actually look up the model numbers, BCGH1000, the first, first one. So let's see what it can do. I believe these things were pretty sophisticated for their time, to be honest. They had a uh, handwriting detection. So let's get into some of the details on these guys, starting with the display. Of course, on the Apple Newton, color didn't really exist on the display. It was a very low resolution, 336 by 240 pixels with a resistive touch screen. 
basically a combination of everything that makes a touchscreen terrible. It's absolutely no surprise that Steve Jobs despised this thing and killed it just as soon as he returned back to Apple. So here's a difference that 24 years makes in displays. Here's about the size of the Apple Newton. If we scale it down on the iPad Pro 10.5 inch, it'll fit in that tiny little corner. In fact, this is how many you can fit on the actual display a massive 48 times. I mean, the resolution is one thing, but you now have 120 Hertz ProMotion display, true tone color, you've got actual color on the display, multi-touch with your fingers, there are so many improvements here. And getting to the actual specs here, you had a fancy 20 megahertz processor made by ARM, 640 kilobytes of RAM, and a worth about $1,172 right now. In comparison, we get this thing at a bargain for $650, with exponentially multiplied specs. So let's get to actually using this thing in day-to-day -day tasks. At the time, the reviews were pretty decent. It's the handwriting recognition that was pretty awful. So let's do some find. Hello. Can it detect that? Oh, it did. Look at that. It literally just spelt out what I wrote. That's awesome. Apple's first virtual on-screen keyboard for a touch device. That is incredible. All right. See? If you, oh, that is absolutely terrible detection. Can you, okay, there we go. So if you do write a little bit more precisely, it can figure it out. Look at that, that's actually pretty cool. Oh no, not rear, no, 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 no. Names, oh, so this is like a, uh, a name book here, and I have no idea whose these are. So Apple even had sort of little apps like these back in the day got a calculator here. Even the new iPad doesn't even have a calculator built in. So this is quite a nice feature to have. Let's test that it works. Looks like it does. Cool. Uh, battery, full battery. We've got contrast. This thing actually has a speaker in it. Interesting. How do I get to the apps? All right. So after using this thing for a little while, I've come to the realization that there really isn't much on it. It's essentially what it says right here, a message pad. You use it to take notes. You can send emails though. So that's kind of neat if you're connected to the internet via the cables here. So that's a possibility. Uh, you can make folders for notes, but extras, there's not much you can do in here. I think there is a web access, but I don't know what uh, it's gonna be like if it's just for email. There are no games, no extras, no apps. You can get extra applications though. And the app store comes in the form of a card up here. So up top here, you'll find a little latch. Go ahead and unlatch it and you can pop down and this card will come out. So much like the Wi-Fi cards and old laptops, this is your app. Before the app store, you would have to preload your own apps into this guy for whatever uh, you wanted to do. And then you would find the card right here. And this would be the certain application for it. So after doing some brief research here, turns out there were multiple accessories for the cards. You can use uh, additional RAM, additional storage, a floppy disk adapter, network adapters, even a Wi-Fi antenna adapter. So there were some expansions that were possible using that card port, but without it, uh, it wasn't much you can really do. You can take notes, use the calculator, some formulas, check the time. It was a very, very basic device. So although at the time, I guess it was kind of sophisticated, you can sit in an office and look smart taking notes on your digital device, getting frustrated with it to not being able to type correctly. But in truth, there wasn't too much that you can do. I don't even know what this speaker is for. How can I possibly activate it here? I really don't know. I think it's just for maybe sound effects. Uh, for error effects, stuff like that. There is a cool calendar app as well in the dates over here. So you can go ahead and jump to it real quick, check your calendar, see if you're free for that meeting on Monday night. So for 1993, not terrible here. And this guy did receive software updates as well. As you can see, I'm on version 1.3 here. So Apple kept that legacy alive by updating with new features, fixes, and so on. It just absolutely blows my mind that 24 years later after release of these devices, this is what we have. A device so sleek, so thin, so good looking, and one that works so incredibly well. The display uses your fingers as inputs. The responsiveness is absolutely insane. The power of this is incredible. The RAM, the battery life, everything. Uh, just improvements in every single way. And who knew 
at the time that this was released that this would be what we were using today something so sophisticated it seems like it's far from in the future this guy at the time though wow using it living with it would be quite the pain as the resistive touchscreen display is not easy to work with it's got the stylus that steve jobs did not like so quite interesting the contrast between these devices and just a couple tidbits for you one of the things that helped the demise of the apple newton happen is the stylus steve jobs hated them it's funny that apple brought them back for the newer ipads but they actually have so much purpose now and i couldn't see myself using one without one there's also the leather cases apple was always a fan of those even for the apple newton there was one and now the one for the ipad pro 10.5 is great i love that apple's keeping that heritage alive so there it is guys the progress 24 years makes so although apple did make huge improvements in the cpu gpu storage the display is actually not that far ahead the resolution although it is good could be better and i think apple will be improving that with time it's just crazy to look back at 24 years it's a little bit over two decades although apple has been working on this thing for exactly 30 years they didn't release it until 1993 so hope you guys enjoyed this really if you're using an ipad nowadays this is what happened before it this is what apple had to go through to bring you the product you have now and i'm so appreciative of all of that progress so guys thanks for watching there it is the apple newton 24 years later i cannot believe people actually use this thing in day-to-day -day life it's just crazy have a great day guys enjoy your ipad peace